Joey Rogers and welcome to Prophecy Files. We're glad that you've joined us today. Obviously, our world is in a crisis right now that is pandemic. It is of biblical proportion as many news commentators and uh, journalists are writing all around the world about events that are taking place. Today, I want to share with you what I believe is the prophetic call of God for the people of God in this particular hour. The coronavirus has captured everyone's attention and uh, we don't know what the end of it is going to be. We don't know what tomorrow may hold, but we do know who holds tomorrow. And if you trust in God and in his word, then you can understand that there are occasions in the word of God throughout the Old Testament, New Testament, where the context of that scripture was applicable, of course, to that particular time and that people. But it also has a dual meaning and a spiritual context for us today. I believe this passage of scripture from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and specifically those above it and beneath it, uh, will be spiritually speaking to us today. How important that it is that we heed the warnings of the word of God from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's upon us right now, the last days, uh, according to what Jesus had to say in Matthew 24, Luke 21, are all uh, pointing toward the time that we're in right now. Even the mere fact that churches all around the world have ceased to be able to have services physically in their buildings because of uh, social distancing, and yet now we see the gospel being preached around the world. Everyone that can get online are doing that to get this gospel around. That is another prophetic sign of the days we're in. But let me draw your attention to 2 Chronicles 7. For the Bible tells us in chapter number 7, around verse 12 and 13, what was happening in this context is that Solomon had just dedicated the temple and the presence of God had come. And according to verse 12, God speaks to Solomon about his house being a house of prayer and the presence of God that is supposed to be there. But then in verse 13, a stark warning that comes from the mouth of God uh, for Solomon and his people, and I believe a uh, very clear warning for all of us today that deals with even national disasters, national repentance, and national mercy. Let's look at it for just a moment. So God is accepting Solomon's prayer initially as he dedicates the temple, and then that answer to the prayer is not exactly what Solomon thinks it should be. Verse uh, number 13 says this, but if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, then verse 14 kicks in, if my people, which are called by my name. We'll touch that in just a moment, but let's look at what the answer God gave and the warning, the stark warning that God gave to Solomon that transfers to us. There is, in verse 13, and in context, verse 13, 14, and 15, that God is speaking to Solomon, to us as well, about a national judgment that comes upon a people that reject God, his word, and the fact that his house would be a house of prayer and the presence of God. In the time we're living, we've seen laws that have been passed that have been directly against the known laws, moral and spiritual laws, the very physical laws that God has laid down for mankind that have not only been rejected, but laws passed against it around the world and here in the United States. That, for me, prophetically speaks of a people that are literally asking for judgment to come. And God says, if this occurs, then these are three elements that are found in verse number 13 that deal with national judgment. Pastor, do you think that this coronavirus and all that's going on is a national judgment? I think it's a very clear bell-ringing warning from God, not just nationally, but worldwide, to the church to get back on their face in prayer and for the world to understand that God is in charge of all things and there's only one true living God. I want you to know there's all three of the major religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, that have all ceased to be able to have uh, their normalities of religious activity. In Mecca, they're not walking around the Black Rock. Uh, in the Vatican, the Pope has literally said within just a few hours of this uh, taping for you today that 
if you can't find a priest, it will be all right for you to ask God directly to forgive your sins. That goes against all the teaching of the Catholic Church to go through him as the vicar or the Christ of the church. Suddenly, the word of God is, is coming alive for people that the just shall live by faith. And then, of course, Christianity. What we want to call Christianity today has ceased to be the house of prayer that God has called us to be and to walk humbly and, and in a righteous place, acknowledging Jesus Christ as a crucified lamb on the cross. We've strayed so far away from that. So in answer to the question, is this a judgment from God? I think it's the merciful hand of God that has ceased everything to get everybody's attention all at the same time that there is a God in heaven, and he alone holds the answers for all that is taking place today. I want you to consider carefully for just a moment these three elements that are found in verse 13. He says, first of all, if I send no rain, the article that you're looking at deals with the fact that uh, California as well as Australia and other portions of the globe have seen drought that has been extended to such a degree that wildfires have taken over. Last year in Australia, you see that the wildfires are coming as a result of no rain. Think about it. And then he goes in to say, if I command the locusts, as I'm speaking right now, Iran, the Middle East, Northern Africa, other locations, this is the terminology, biblical plague. Now, remember, these are also the plagues. This is not unprecedented. These are the same plagues that in the time we're living right now, literally on the calendar for us, approaching the time of Passover, which goes back to the book of Exodus, these plagues were happening in Egypt as a judgment of God against Pharaoh and all of his leadership that continued to hold the people of God captive, the Hebrews. That's so important for you to understand. Because these plagues, and God uses things like this to get the world's attention. And so he says, if I send the locusts that devours the land, the second judgment. So we're seeing right now that the locusts that are devouring uh, the land in northern Africa, uh, I've seen in Pakistan as well as in Iran and other locations where they're coming in and in less than 30 minutes, they literally wipe the vegetation off of the earth. My friends, that's unprecedented in our modern time. We're seeing, they said, a 30-year span since anything like this has even happened. Some of the video even shows because of the infestation of locusts, the ground looks like it literally is moving because there are so many locusts as a result of no rain. But the third one draws my attention. In verse 13, he said, or if I send pestilence among my people, now, you need to understand that as we're sitting here today and all that's taking place and our leaders are, are scrambling to try to find vaccine and, and get the uh, a proper amount of medication to people that is needed, uh, all the things and all the efforts that are going on to combat this coronavirus that came, according as our understanding, from an animal, you need to understand that God does not send disease. So when you see this terminology, send, it's not that he sends it, but allows things to take place. He alone hardened the heart of Pharaoh to the degree that he would allow the children of Israel to get tossed out immediately after that 10th plague out of Egypt's bondage. This is an attention getter for all of us because this term pestilence, according to uh, the Old Testament Hebrew and the original writings literally is the same terminology that you use to describe, and commentators have made it clear, the bubonic plague. This is the same type of term that is used. So right now, we have what is the equivalent of a plague that is spanning the globe all around. And obviously, all of us are affected by it makes no difference who you are, young, old, rich, poor, uh, no race, your social status, uh, political status. It makes no difference. Everybody is being affected by this. That's why that we've got to not only pay attention to what the Word of God has to say, but also to pay attention to what the solution is. Verse 14 is the solution. Listen carefully. If my people, God said, stop, if my people, he's not talking about the world, those that don't know the Lord, he's speaking specifically to the people of God. 
He said, if my people, which are called by my name, so there is not only the people that are his, but those that actually name the name of God, they declare themselves to be believers in Jehovah God, whose son is Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, died on the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day, and is alive right now. All of that combined, he said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, first step. First step for national repentance is a humbling of everybody. And that includes specifically the house of God, those that name the name of the Lord. Humble ourselves and pray. We've seen prayer meetings that have been popping up all over the world, and you're seeing that on social media. That's the right thing to do, to pray, to get right in right relationship with God. And he says, seek my face, not my hands. You've been getting my provision, but I want you to have the closeness of my presence. Listen, the Bible says that the countenance of the king is where we want to be. That's where favor is located, according to the book of Proverbs. He said, if you'll seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, turn away from the things that you've been running after, the things that are bringing sin into your life. This is a call for the people of God. It is the prophetic call of God for us as the people of God to get right with God in national and international repentance. Then this is what God's promise is. He said, this is the this is the mercy, the national and international mercy that comes. He said, if you'll turn from your wicked ways, then I'll hear you from heaven. I will hear your cries from heaven. God is listening to the cries of his people today. He also is saying, I not only will hear you from heaven, but I will forgive your sin. Look at the mercy of God. And he said, then I will heal your land. I won't heal the people, you're part of that, but I will not only heal the people, but I will heal the land. This speaks of a, of a completeness of God's mercy upon not only uh, the group of people, but entirely of the world. Listen carefully to me. I truly believe the prophetic call of God is upon the people of God right now for us to be able to turn back to God and you have the ability through calling out upon the Lord to stay the plague that is sweeping our globe right now. Now, that's so important in light of the fact that the Bible tells us here just a little bit further down that if we don't turn back to him and we begin to serve other gods and worship other gods, then he said these things will come upon you and continue. Now, what is that going to mean? That means not only for the ruination of the state, of the of the our national society, because we understand that not only is the plague having its effect physically upon people, but it's also having the effect upon the economy where people are losing their jobs and all that's taking place. He's calling us prophetically from the Old Testament book of 2 Chronicles 7 to come back to me. Get right with God. I'll heal your land. I can heal the, God can turn the economy around. He can stay the plague in a moment if the people of God will call out on the Lord. But I can assure you, the church must be the ones who stops the plague by seeking the face of God. I truly believe that God is calling on us to respond to what's taking place right now. Will you do that? Will you hear this pastor speaking to you now to call you prophetically, as God's word says, back to the right relationship with God. If there's things in your life that perhaps may not be right with God and maybe you've uh, changed the priorities of your life, Matthew 6, says for us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these things will be added. We flip that around and today's society, including the church, has sought after things instead of the kingdom of God and his face. Let's turn back to God in this hour because I believe that what you're seeing now, certainly, certainly what the Lord calls the beginning of sorrows in Matthew 24, where things are coming at every angle as fast as we can count them. And it is a sign to us of the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? If you're not, get ready right now. This is the hour to turn you and your family while you're right there confined perhaps to your home. Get around, call your family back to prayer. Realign your priorities to make God first in your life and then 
when this plague is over, and I believe it will be, I have no doubt in my mind that the people of God are calling out on the Lord. I believe God's gonna show his mighty hand. And when this is over, don't neglect the assembling of yourself together in church. Don't think just because it's gone now, I can, uh, relief has come and I'm just gonna go back to the same way. No, this is a time to realign your priorities, your finances, every part of our life. Let's get it all back in line with God. And as soon as those doors open at your church, I would say get to the house of God with you and your family and let's worship the Lord together because I believe beyond the shadow of any doubt what's happening right now is proving to us that Jesus Christ is on his way. Thank you for joining me for Prophecy Files this week. I pray that this has been a help to you to not only seek the face of God but to keep looking up because I believe Jesus Christ is coming soon. We'll see you next time.